Hi students, I am Professor Aves Ahmed Husseini, working as Assistant Professor in Mechanical Engineering Department at Sharad Institute of Technology, College of Engineering, Yadra. In our earlier videos, we discussed a lot of the things related with the steam turbine along with their construction and working of impulse as well as reaction turbine. Now in this video, we will discuss new concept that is steam condenser so students as we know that the general working of the steam power plant and number of the components are there so this is the elements of the condensing power plants basically there are two types of the steam power plants are available one is condensing power plant and other is non condensing power plant so here we will discuss elements of the steam condensing power plant so the basic components are boiler, condenser, cooling tower, and number of the pumps, condensate extraction pump, hot well, boiler feed pump. So these are the basic components of the elements of the steam condensing power plant. So the main function of the boiler is to produce a steam by evaporation process and water get converted into steam and the same steam is enters in the condenser through the steam turbine in steam turbine the expansion is carried out and we will get the mechanical energy and after expansion of the steam in the steam turbine that steam is enters in the elements that is condenser in condenser the latent heat of the condensation takes place and heat is rejected to the atmosphere and because of that latent heat of uh, condensation that steam get converted into liquid and that liquid is generally called as condensate also one element which is always conjugated with the condenser that is cooling tower so the main function of that cooling tower is to collect the heat from the condenser by circulating the cooling water in the passage of the condenser shell and then because of that the heat transfer takes place and uh, latent heat will responsible for the changing the phase of that substance working substance from steam to or vapor to liquid and whatever that condensate is get available at the end of the condensation process it is collected in the hot well through the condensate extraction pump so that particular extraction pump is needed to allow the condensate to the hot well so hot well is a generally a storage area where that condenser that condensate is stored for a long duration of the time and also from that hot well that condensate is given to the or circulate to the boiler through the boiler feed pump so these are the basic elements of the steam power plants once again i just give the names of the elements of the steam condensing power plant the first is boiler second one is a steam turbine third one is a condenser fourth one is cooling tower next is pump that is condensate extraction pump next is hot well next is boiler feed pump and next is boiler so these are the important element of the steam condensing plant now in this slide we will discuss what is condenser and what is the function of the condenser so condenser is generally a closed shell it is made by some kind of the fabrication process and the vacuum is needed to maintain inside the condensate cell in order to produce a good kind of the condensate so vacuum is very important in the condenser shell so it is a condenser which is used to condense a steam that is the main thing is to condense means that water the main function of the condenser is to condense the steam from vapor to liquid and the same liquid is given to the boiler through the pump so this is the main thing of that condenser the function is maintain condensing pressure below atmospheric also to supply the hot feed water to the boiler to the cycle again these are the basic two functions of the steam condenser So here you will get idea about the theory related with the steam condenser. 
द स्टीम कंडेंसर इज अ क्लोज वेसल इन टू विच द स्टीम एग्जिस्ट द टर्बाइन एंड फोर्स टू गिव अप टू लैटेंट हीट ऑफ द वेपराइजेशन एंड इन कंडेंसर द लैटेंट हीट ऑफ द कंडेंसेशन टेक्स प्लेस एंड फेस चेंज ऑकर्स फ्रॉम दैट वेपर टू लिक्विड एंड फर्दर दैट लिक्विड इज अलाउ इन बॉयलर थ्रू द कंडेंसेड एक्सट्रैक्शन पम्प एज वेल एज फ्रॉम द हॉट वेल सो दिस इज ऑल आर अबाउट स्टीम कंडेंसर सो दिस इज द क्लासिफिकेशन ऑफ द स्टीम कंडेंसर देर आर टू टाइप्स ऑफ द कंडेंसर फर्स्ट इज जेट कंडेंसर द अनादर नेम ऑफ जेट कंडेंसर इज मिक्सिंग टाइप कंडेंसर वेर द मिक्सिंग ऑफ द स्टीम एज वेल एज वॉटर टेक्स प्लेस and second one is a surface condenser it is also called as a non mixing type condenser so here that jet condenser is again classified into four types that is parallel flow jet condenser counter flow jet condenser barometric type jet condenser and ejector type condenser these are the four examples of the jet condenser the main speciality of the jet condenser is the mixing takes place between that steam as well as water so it is called as a mixing type condenser the second one is surface condenser the another name of that surface condenser is a non mixing type condenser there are four types down flow surface condenser central flow surface condenser regenerative type surface condenser and evaporative type surface condenser the main speciality is the mix non mixing of the two fluid like that steam and water in case of that surface condenser so let us discuss that first type that is jet condenser so students keep in mind that again that jet condenser is classified into two types low level jet condenser and high level jet condenser so here in case of the low level condensed extraction pump is mandatory but in case of the high level condenser the condensed extraction pump is not required so parallel flow and counter flow jet condenser are come under low level condenser and in case of that e evaporative type or uh, you can take example of that barometric and ejector type condenser are come under high level jet condenser where there is no requirement of the condensed extraction pump to allow that condensed into the hot well so students now we will discuss that parallel flow condenser it is also called as a low level jet condenser here you will get the information about the components of that parallel flow condenser so this is the shell outermost which is made by metal which is corrosion resistance stainless steel material is generally used the steam is enter from the top side these are the baffle plates which allow the water in the form of the sprinklet so this is the line of the cooling pond which continuously supply cooling water in the passage of the condenser shell at the end there is a collection of the condensate also there is one element most important element that is air extraction pump is needed the name of that pump is edward air pump the main function of that edward air pump or that air pump is to remove the air which is available in the condenser shell to maintain the proper vacuum inside the shell it is mandatory to remove the air which is available in the condenser so condenser shell so that's why that air pump that is edward air pump is used so here there is one another pump the name of that pump is condensed extraction pump the main function of that pump is to allow the water which is available that is condensed the meaning of that condenser is just a water it uh, into the hot well so these are the basic important components of the parallel flow condenser now we will discuss the working the name itself indicate parallel means the direction of the steam entering and the direction of the cooling water entering is same that is the same direction the steam and cooling water is enters and the mixing takes place so the name is given parallel flow jet condenser why it is called as a parallel flow because the direction of the steam entering and the direction of the cooling water entering is same so that's why the name is given parallel flow jet condenser so here when the steam 
from the boiler and from boiler it enters in the turbine and from turbine that steam is enters in the condenser shell simultaneously cooling water from the cooling tower or from the cooling water tank it enters from the top side of the vessel or the top side of the shell and simultaneously mixing of these two different fluid takes place and because of that heat transfer occurs and latent heat of the condensation takes place and due to that the phase change occurs from the vapor to liquid that is water and that water is known as condensate and that condensate is collected and stored in the hot well through the condensate extraction pump the main function of that condensate extraction pump is to allow condensate from the bottom of the shell and it enter into the hot well again from the hot well that particular uh, water is given to the boiler for next cycle operation and whatever the extra water is available it is enters in the cooling pond for cooling purpose so this is all are about parallel flow jet condenser now we will discuss counter flow condenser the another name of that counter flow jet condenser is low level jet condenser where the requirement of the condensed condensed extraction pump is mandatory the name itself is given counter flow because the direction of the steam entering and the direction of the cooling water entering is totally opposite in counter direction and mixing takes place so it is called as a counter flow jet condenser the main difference between counter and parallel flow is in case of the counter flow jet condenser the direction of the steam and the direction of the cooling water enters is same but in case of the counter flow the direction of the steam enter and the direction of the cooling water enter is totally different so now here you will get idea about the direction of the steam which is coming uh, from the bottom of the shell and air extraction pump is placed on the top side of the shell the main function of the air extraction pump is to remove the air or excess air which is available in the condenser shell in order to maintain the proper vacuum inside so for satisfactory operation of the any kind of the condenser we must have to maintain a con vac proper vacuum inside the shell so that's why if some air is remains in the shell we must have to remove it so that's why that air extraction pump is needed and in case of the counter flow it is situated or it is placed on the top side of the shell now similar way when the steam from the boiler and from boiler it enters the turbine and from turbine it enters into the shell of the condenser from the bottom of the shell and the cooling water from the cooling water pond or from the cooling tower that cooling water is enter from the top of the side where when the steam and cooling water when mixed with each other the latent heat of the condensation takes place due to heat transfer phenomena and phase change occurs because of the latent heat of the condenser condensation process and finally the steam get converted into water the water is nothing but condensate and that condensate is collected in the hot well through the condensate extraction pump so the main function of the condenser condensate extraction pump is to extract the condensate which is available at the bottom of the shell and allow it into the hot well and the from hot well that particular water is given to the boiler for continuous cycle purpose continuous smooth running of the cycle purpose and that overflow is uh, enters in the cooling pond where that water is again cooled due to uh, natural phenomena and again that cooling water is enters in, into the condenser shell so this is all are about counter flow condenser now there are two types of the condenser again that particular condenser is not mentioned in this slide but only it is same as that of the counter flow only that particular line that is condensate line is longer and that water is directly enters in the hot well in absence of condensate extraction pump so the first type is parallel flow jet condenser second one is the counter flow jet condenser both are come under low level jet condenser and remaining two types of the jet condenser is barometric type condenser it is look like the same as that of the counter flow working is also same only 
here this particular line return line of that condensate is longer around 10.76 meter long and because of that barometric pressure because of the gravity water fall directly into the hot well in absence of the condensate extraction pump so it is called as a counter flow jet condenser or that particular barometric type jet condenser so that counter flow and barometric is same as far as working is to be considered only main difference is absence of condensate extraction pump in case of the barometric type condenser and the another name of that barometric condenser is high level jet condenser because in absence of condensate extraction pump water directly enters or that condensate directly enters in the hot well because of gravity force now the last type of the jet condenser is the ejector type jet condenser here the direction of the steam from the boiler and from the boiler to steam turbine and from the steam turbine that steam is enters from the top side of that particular shell so this is the shell portion of the condenser and it include inside n number of the hollow truncated cones so the main function of that truncated cone is to convert that pressure energy into kinetic energy and at the end again that divergent cone is required it uh, do the exact opposite function of that hollow truncated cone where again that kinetic energy get converted into pressure energy and water directly enters in the hot well in absence of the condensate extraction pump so here this is the construction of the ejector type condenser so the steam is coming from the top side of the shell or some kind of the little bit uh, upper part of that uh, middle section and the cooling water from the cooling water pond or from the cooling tower is ent enter from the top of the shell the mixing takes place of that steam and water and the mixture is passes through the n number of the hollow truncated cones where that pressure energy get converted pressure energy of that mixture get converted into kinetic energy and at the end there is a long single divergent cone is provided and here that pre, that kinetic energy again get converted into pressure energy and due to that pressure water is enters or that condensate is enters directly in the hot well in absence of the condensate extraction pump so there is a no need of the condensate extraction pump in case of the ejector type condenser and uh, here the main speciality of that ejector type condenser is uh, there is a no need of the condensate extraction pump here so when the steam and the when the water is come in contact with the each other then directly phase change takes place due to latent heat of the condensation place and we will get condensate at the end and that condensate is pa finally passes through the divergent cone because of that uh, that the kinetic energy of that mixture get converted into pressure energy and that condensate is collected in the hot well through the uh, particular divergent cone in absence of the condensate extraction pump so the main speciality of that all kinds of the jet condenser is the mixing of steam as well as water takes place but it never be happen in case of the another type of the condenser that is surface condenser so there are some advantages as well as disadvantages of the jet condensers the advantages are simple in design as well as it is cheaper the second advantage is less floor area is required disadvantage of the jet type condenser is condensate is not pure hence cannot be reused so whatever the condensate is available it is not reused again because it is not pure so this is the most important disadvantages of the jet type condenser but it never happen in case of the surface condenser similar way low vacuum efficiency is there in case of the jet con condenser as compared with surface condenser so students in this particular video we discussed basic function of the condenser their classification also that uh, there are uh, two types jet condenser as well as surface condenser and in this video we discuss four important types of the jet condenser that is parallel flow jet condenser counter flow jet condenser that particular barometric type jet condenser and ejector type jet condenser so students our next video will be on construction and working and their types of the surface condenser thank you